So what's Vladimir Putin up to now? It's a developing story coming out of Moscow. Putin today is apparently calling on pro-Russian separatists in Ukraine to postpone their referendum on secession. He says putting off the vote could create more room for diplomacy to solve the crisis peacefully. And he also said he's pulling back Russian troops from Ukraine's border, some 40 to 50,000 fighters in all. Well, the Pentagon says it has seen no sign of that. Either way, it is an odd twist today. Could Putin be blinking? That is the question. And with us here to discuss more in Washington, Eli Lake, senior national security correspondent for the Daily Beast. All right, so Eli, we've checked our sources. They're saying they've seen no sign of a pullback as we've seen. Putin is claiming this. What are you hearing? And also it should be noted that some of these Russian or pro-Russian separatists have also said that they are not following this particular order yet from Moscow. But I think, uh, you know, our reporter on the ground in Donetsk right now is reporting this as more potentially as a pause. And one of the things that's going on is that there still is a campaign from the Ukrainian military to restore order in the east. So in that situation, given that there are still conflict and fighting, it's difficult to have the kind of referendum that they had in Crimea, where pretty much they took over the peninsula and then they were ready for a referendum there was very little pushback right now in eastern ukraine you are seeing that pushback and i think that that um, you know the best laid plans always have to deal with uh... the uh... moves of the adversary all right so let's pull back the curtain on this the, these announcements coming from putin the supposed pullback and saying uh... that the votes in ukraine should be postponed uh, some are suggesting that that putin might be blinking here what are your thoughts on that um, well, until we see some of those troops actually move, I don't think we can call it a blink yet. I think it's probably safer to say that it's a pause. And, you know, there is, I think, not only significant international diplomatic opposition, but the Ukrainian military is trying its best to restore order at this point. And I think that he realizes that you can't just have a referendum in the middle of a conflict like that. And so some of this may be, I think, dictated more by pragmatic reasons and less of a sense that, you know, Putin is kind of coming back from the edge. It seems like he's still very much interested in carving out as much of Ukraine as he desires. It's interesting. I was reading your article uh, in the Daily Beast about how Ukraine can learn from Georgia, saying basically that the Ukraine crisis, Ukraine crisis isn't some sort of outlier. Um, there might be some lessons in there. Explain, yeah. if you would, uh, who you talked to and what lessons could be learned. Well, I was able to interview the Georgian defense minister who is in Washington this week for uh, meetings with, uh, you know, high-level Obama uh, administration officials. And what he said was that, you know, he really emphasized the importance of having younger, Western-oriented and Western-trained officers in charge of the key posts in the military, and that, uh, like Georgia, Ukraine has a number of its senior military officers as well as intelligence officers who've worked closely and been trained by the Russians. He said, frankly, those people are probably going to be moles. They're probably going to have divided loyalties. And it's mm -hmm. better to have a kind of younger generation coming in. And he also said to be very wary of so-called pro-Russian separatist NGOs. And these NGOs crop up, and he said a lot of times they are fronts for Russian intelligence. And it's important to get to that problem early before Russia's saboteurs can spark a wider conflict, giving them a kind of pretext to fully use military force and invade. Hmm. All right, Eli Lake, thank you. Thank you. And coming up right here on.